Sometimes when I look at the meditation as a chore, it's something you have to get through. We should really look at it as an opportunity, because so much of the day our minds are filled with distraction. This job, that job, this has to be done, that has to be done. And only now, as you're sitting here with your eyes closed, does the mind have time to be by itself. To heal itself, to get to know itself. That's an important opportunity. There's so many people out there in the world that don't have this opportunity at all. So instead of looking at the hour as something you have to get through, Look at it as, as something you want to get the most out of it. Be here for each breath as it's coming in and as it's going out. Because it's in the doing of the practice that the, the understandings that we want, the happiness that we want, the realizations that we want, it's right in the doing that they're discovered. It's not like a factory process where you just put things in and they have to go through the factory and then the finished product comes out at the other end. It's through the processing that we start understanding the mind. And if you're paying attention now, that's where you're going to discover these things. If you're not paying attention now where you're meditating, when are you going to learn anything? So it's right here, right now. And what you're doing right here, right now, that's what you have to look into. And what do you see right here, right now? It's not that you're just sitting here passively observing things or that experience is a given. You're shaping it. that you come to in the meditation is you're shaping it more than you realize. You play a bigger role in creating your experience of the present moment than you might have thought. And so what we're doing now is trying to play a, a skillful role in that fabrication. This is why I like to use the word fabrication for some car. Give a sense of the artificiality of the whole thing. All these things being put together to create our present moment. And if we don't see the artificiality of the present moment, we're missing a lot of the Dharma. The best way to get a sense of that is to try to do it skillfully. We focus in on the breath, because that's one of the basic fabrications right there. And again, it seems so much a given, just what's coming in, going out. It's already there. It's already happening, which is true. But as soon as you pay attention to it, you change it. So the question is, how can you pay attention to it in a way that makes it something you'd like to pay attention to, something that's interesting? This is why we talk about getting a sense of what a rhythm feels good right here in the present moment. And when there's a sense of comfort that comes from the breath, how you spread that through the different parts of the body, and how you can use the breath to become more sensitive to other levels of energy in the body, and also other levels of awareness. Awareness isn't a unitary thing. There are many levels to it. It's like an onion. It has lots of layers. One important distinction you'll discover is the difference between the awareness of when you make up your mind, okay, I'm going to look at the breath. Well, who is the I looking at the breath? Is that the only awareness? It is. There is. We discover there's not. There's kind of an awareness already there in the body. It's not that your awareness is centered up here in the head and the awareness in the head is going to have to get to know the awareness down in the leg. You'll discover there's, it's almost like there's an awareness there in the leg already. I think it was 
dove into one side. It's not that we're practicing mindfulness of the body. We're just letting the body's mindfulness or the body's awareness show itself. You'll see the distinction as you get to know, okay, this is just the basic sensation. And there's a level of awareness there in the legs and in the arms. And here's the awareness in the head that's trying to make sense out of these things, connect these things. Beware of those two levels of awareness. Because it's the second one that does a lot of the fabrication. But in the beginning, it's enough just to get to know the fact, yeah, there are two levels of awareness going on here in the body. And then you start noticing the interaction, how certain parts of your awareness of the present moment are given. Something that's the result of your past karma, and then how much of it is actually willed into being this, into being that, like that basic sensation in the leg. You realize that there is an active identification of leg. And you find you may find yourself tensing it up in a particular way just to reaffirm that, yeah, okay, there's a leg and it has a particular shape that you're familiar with because you've seen it before. And then you take your sensations, these, this raw material of energy in the body, and you make that shape out of it. And sometimes you do a good job and sometimes you mess it up. But just learn how to notice that happening, because it gives you a clue to how you create other things. And you realize that you know, there is a huge element of choice in how you create things. Of course, while you're sitting here meditating, there's a bigger element of choice. When you're out dealing with other people, out dealing with other things that may arise in the body, you find, okay, sometimes past karma comes in pretty heavy and there's not much choice. Without that many choices available to you. But even then, there's an element of the present intention, what's willed, both in what you, what you perceive and then willed and what you're going to do about it. And it's important to see that happening, because otherwise you'll never gain a sense of what the Buddha taught about the five khandhas, what he taught about skillfulness, all these basic teachings. The reason he taught about so many things is that they're all relevant to the present moment. The re present moment can be very complex, but when we're sitting here we have the opportunity to look at it for long periods of time. You start seeing all the subtleties, and you learn to deal, deal with it a lot more skillfully. It's like somebody going out in a boat on the ocean. Sometimes you hit a big wave and the boat capsizes. And some people, after that happens once, they go back on the land and never, never go back out in the ocean again. Other people say, well, maybe there's a skill in how to deal with a capsized boat. Maybe there's even a better skill. When a big wave comes like that, how do you not capsize? How can you stay the course? The wave from the ocean, that stands for your past karma. Your skill in using your boat stands for your present karma. And that's what we're working on here as we meditate, developing more and more skill. And now we take our little boat across the ocean. So as we're meditating, it's not just an issue of opening up to the present moment. That's a lot of it right there, but it's also getting a sense of, okay, what are we doing in the present moment? And how can we do it more skillfully? And once you learn how to relate to the present moment of just the body sitting here breathing more skillfully, then you can start dealing in other situations. in a more skillful way that doesn't create so much suffering for yourself. This is why we find it hard sometimes to sit and meditate, because all these things come churning up in the mind. We don't know how to deal with them. We get overwhelmed by them. We're used to their taking over. 
But the whole purpose of the meditation is not allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by them. We admit that they're there, and we look at what they do. And sometimes we don't like seeing what they do, which is that's what makes the meditation difficult. But that's the first step in learning how to deal with them skillfully. Okay, this is what a wave can do to you. And you start seeing how many times in the course of the day you're, the waves do come and overwhelm your little boat. And as if the waves in the ocean weren't bad enough, sometimes you find that you're, the way you're steering your boat, that creates waves for yourself too. Sometimes the ocean can be perfectly still and you capsize anyhow. It's no fun to see that, but you've learned a lesson. Okay, this is what the mind does. So you get the boat back up and you practice some more. And you work at it until you find you finally get to the level where you can handle whatever the ocean throws at you. So we've got a whole hour to work on these skills. To be with each breath as it comes in, as it goes out. And to get a sense of how to deal with each breath skillfully. When unpleasant things come welling up, okay, see if you can use the breath. Because we're using the breath as our basic tool here. Is there some way to breathe? Is there some way to focus on the breath? That helps get you through those waves of emotion and those waves of impatience. Or Whatever. And always remind yourself that okay, you can keep learning. If you get capsized once, well, get your boat right back up and try again. And if you have that attitude, then there will have to come the day okay, when the boat doesn't capsize, no matter what comes. <laughs>